be set until that decision is made. That means it's also not clear how long the band will be restricted from performing. A lot of people were watching that night on TV, including my mom and my dad. <laughs> so I had a lot of explaining to do. But I know that all of you already know this stuff about the media, but it was really quite incredible to actually, it's one thing to kind of intellectually know it or read about it, but to actually go through it and do it and see what happens, it was really, uh, you know, I, I recommend it to everybody. Um, it was a, a great experience, and, we, and as you were laughing, it, it, you know, in the story, every time they had to talk about it, they always had to keep using this phrase, Christianity is stupid, over and over and over. Uh, the San Francisco Chronicle, which is the main daily paper of uh, the Bay Area, they saw the news broadcast. Well, obviously the story's true. It was on TV. So they called us up. Richard said, I'm, we're not talking to you because we just got a rock thrown through our window and he hung up on them. That made it on, to, which was a lie, that made it onto page three of the front page section of the paper. And then ultimately, we ended up on NPR. And at that point, we decided to actually tell the truth. And, um, explain that we'd been lying to all of our fans. I, I love the idea that all of our fans have been feeling so sorry for us for all these uh, you know, months and months, uh, you know, realize we'd just completely been screwing with them. You never trust your favorite groups. So, um, uh, uh, um, I, yeah, it's too much to go into here, but uh, as this was evolving, we did, just in case you're wondering, we did become increasingly uncomfortable with the fact that that while this is a, a, an incredible prank and hoax and we were learning a lot, it also really was exploiting a real, true human tragedy. And that we did feel you know, con increasingly conflicted about that as this story spiraled out uh, into a bigger and bigger uh, spheres of, of media. So we decided the responsible thing to do was to make an art project out of it. And so we made a, a, record, a, C, which, a record which eventually became a CD um, that in honor of reporter Hal Eisner's promise to not sensationalize it, we called this record Helter Stupid. So that's a little bit of, of, of uh, just one little story of stuff Negative Land's been up to. The next thing we did after this was a record, where, the, uh, the U2 record, where we got sued by uh, Island Records for trademark fraud, copyright infringement, and everything you can imagine. And, um, so that would be another hour and a half talk. Well. One of the things that we ended up doing was uh, uh, making a piece of audio that was using some wonderful bits uh, and pieces from a Walt Disney film, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, <clears throat> Walt Disney audio taken from a film called uh, The Little Mermaid. And that was in a book that documented this whole lawsuit over the U2 single. It's called Fair Use, the story of the letter U and the numeral 2. And we made a piece that utilized The Little Mermaid and a punk rock song from the band Black Flag and chunks of TV shows about cor corruption in the music industry. And um, we ended up uh, getting to know uh, this gentleman here, Mr. Tim Maloney, who was, um, and I'm probably going to get this story slightly wrong because I always do. Um, Tim was working in, uh, for Walt Disney at the time in the building where they were doing the uh, Little Mermaid Saturday morning cartoon show. And uh, we really hit it off with Tim and we had this piece we'd already made um, with, um, with audio from the Little Mermaid and we said, hey Tim, you, you know, you work in the building. You have access to all their gear. You know how to draw the, the Little Mermaid. We should make something with you. You know, and so uh, that's my segue into uh, uh, Mr. Maloney. Hello. How are you all? I've been missing you. Uh, yeah, I, uh, hmm, what to say after that great introduction? Hmm. He is. Yeah, everything you already said, yeah. Uh, it is true. I did work uh, for the Walt Disney Company at that time. Uh, what Mark, uh, yeah, he usually gets that, that part right about uh, I worked in the same building that they made the Little Mermaid TV show. Actually, I went to purchase a uh, readily available book called How to Draw the Little Mermaid that you can get just about anywhere. So that I didn't really have any specialized knowledge other than that uh, to, to do the Little Mermaid. I think we should just show it, though, if it's uh, possible to do that. But he's talking right now, so it might not happen. Can we show the uh, clip? It's easier to give me something to talk about. It's all right. Okay, I'll keep talking. <laughs>
it looks a lot like the KPIX uh, segment. For the most of it, looks about the same. You know, uh, it's later. No, earlier. It has to be earlier. It's on the first page. There you go. There's a little mermaid. Gimme, gimme, gimme! Don't ask what for! Get around 